With a jungle adjustment, we could see one out of them here. I mean, they can definitely do better in the early game if they have a more aggressive jungle up there. So I think that's going to be the goal for them. Otherwise, go and do the same. Trust in your bottom lane to do well 2v2, and then just focus on snowballing your mid and top lane, and they might actually have a chance here. Yep. Yeah, I, s I said it last uh, after the game that um, Ace could have actually won the game, I think, in my eyes. Uh, they had a solid early game start. If the jungler would have had more influence and the game didn't get caught out of the dragon, and then they could have maybe snowballed that lead or that tiny advantage into win. So we, I'm just like excited to see what they're going to plan for the next draft and maybe adjust. Definitely. And from Dignitas' side also, I really like that they went for something that was a strategy that they had to execute as a team, knowing that they had the new components in their team. That actually says a lot about their confidence level. Oh yeah, for sure. Again, they have been practicing for a long time already. They feel very ready and we just saw it here. It worked for them. As soon as they got to team fires and got the picks, they just won, took, over, uh, took over the game completely and won it. Yep. And we are into picks and bans. Lissandra and Jarvan banned out by Dignitas and Rumble and Rengar and Zed from the side of Aces High. So I really like that um, how Dignitas put up the bans here. Lissandra and Rumble ban and Jarvan. It puts them in a tough spot because now they kind of have to ban Lee Sin too to not give it first pick to Dignitas, but also eliminating like two of the high damage threats from the top lane, Lissandra and Rumble. So that means that they probably are going to pick something more like tanky, maybe, probably Maokai. You see Nar maybe Nar as well. Also open. Would be open. Okay, banned. There Never we go. mind. I wouldn't be surprised to see like a Lee Sin pick up first right now. Oh, they're going with the Maokai. Okay. Maokai. That's good too. Every like three top lane bans. I mean, yeah. I mean, it works. It's, it's good. It, it, it worked it before. Worked out last game yeah. pretty well. He was like 5 0 8. And then with one gank, completely crush the lane. So I wouldn't, yeah. The no. problem is, you are leaving a lot of good picks open here by yeah. taking Maokai, and you don't necessarily know if the enemy team actually wants the Maokai here. He is one of the stronger picks in the top lane, but yes. there is a lot of other options. Aurelia would have been open as well. In this case here, yeah, Azir, if it does get locked in and you take Jenna at the same time, you've already built yourself a Siege Comp mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. And you have two chairmen who can engage super well. You have long range poke from it. If they go for this one, if they can get a Corky pick as well on their side, it can look super, super strong. And I actually like that comp as well, because yeah. if you do get a lead early game, if you manage to play like you did here in the last game, you can just set up these early sieges, get the second dragon, and take the game. Seems to be Pantheon. Yeah, I mean... Mm, don't I swap it over. Okay. They didn't hear it. Yeah. They totally swapped it over. I agree. I think Azir first rotation is a bit risky, because Xeroth is still open, mm -hmm. and Xeroth is like the hardest counter to Azir, just because of how his poke works and everything, and it would be too risky, in my opinion. They have a last pick, so they can just go last Azir and then in a really good spot. But yeah, I kind of agree that uh, they should just pick something more. Um, yeah, so Pantheon. We do get an early game jungler now. Yep. We finally have an early game jungler I mean, and they, they uh, pick away the Sivir. So Corki's still open. I'm not sure if prioritizing Sivir is that important here because he did very well last game with Corki. So why would you change what worked out for you, right? So. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing a Jenna being locked in together with the yeah. Panther. And then if they didn't want to take the Azir at least in the in the first rotation, save the AD carry pick here yeah. because you knew Korkic would be an option. You saw the lane beforehand, it would have been fine for you and you could still have run the, this potential siege comp. But deciding on the Sivir early and taking it away and Graves, I mean, he basically doesn't even care about Sivir in the lane. Yeah, sure, you can spell shield the yeah. box shot here, but it's super hard to time it correctly unless you can see the animation. There's a different animation when he actually fires uh, the Q or the ulti from Graves compared to his auto attack, but if you don't know what the animation looks like and if you're not fast enough, you won't block anything, and therefore Graves is tanky enough to just control that lane. So yeah, I really like the Jenna. It is Holy Phoenix, here. so maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I really like the, the Syndra pickup and Jenna pickup. Syndra is a very good pick in, like, to blind pick one on one. And it kind of gives um, top lane. I mean, they already picked top lane, so. I'm I mean, actually super surprised we didn't see a Janna being logged in on the side of Dickens. Yeah, yeah, instead I of mean, the Lee Sin, because you already have the Pantheon yeah. locked in, so you don't need to take your jungler. Grace, Janna is, if not the strongest dual lane at the moment, at least one of them. And at the same time, Janna is an absolutely fantastic pick against Pantheon, because he goes in, you knock him away, and he's out of the fight, basically. He won't be able to do anything. You can always disengage from it. So I would have liked to see the Janna being locked in instead. Taking the Lee Sin, didn't want to show anything, want to kind of save potential counter picks, especially yeah. uh, for the mid lane. And Aria coming in here, we talked about it before, banned out in the last game, but Shifter is going to get his hands on Peter Yeah, Mark. it's his go-to pick, um, and I'm pretty sure he's very confident in the matchup, even if Syndra... Still risky. Syndra should have the upper hand for yes. sure, but I'm pretty sure that it's just the confidence picks to show that, uh -huh. like, yeah. Confidence. It's my, it's my champion, yes. I'm just going to lock it in and then... There is room to outplay. I mean, this, it is a yeah. skill matchup, but Syndra, if she can time it, 
where Ari is dashing or she can actually manage to land the stun beforehand, she can basically blow up the Ari very, very easily. So Cinder yep. should have the pressure in there, but we saw in the last matchup with LeBlanc from Shifter here, he shows confidence, he knows one-on-one -on -one he can do well, and he's definitely uh, looking to do it here. Also with the Lee Sin pick, we can see a lot of jungle action. Lee Sin Pantheon, super early game here. I'm hoping to see both junglers be very, very active, I yep. see then who takes uh, who gets the lead through those ganks. Yeah, I mean, it's the top cast. Sunder Pantheon is really good against Ari, just stunning, like lining up everything. And then the cast and last pick is, like ve is very good against Maokai. I mean, yeah. has been like a standard play, like counter pick more or less. Even when Maokai pushes him in like early, Kassan can just free farm and has like no problems actually scaling up. And again, from Aces High here, you have a super mobile comp because of the Ziva, you have to disengage. Yeah. And if you manage to get a target low of the Syndra, Kassanen can then follow up here and clean it. Problem is, you don't have a tank. You don't have anyone who wants to engage in that lineup. Mm -hmm. You need Dignitas to engage onto yeah. you, and that can be a problem because it makes them able to dictate yeah. the game. Maybe they realized last game, early game has been going quite well. And then, yeah, all in early game. If, if it doesn't work out, if Pantheon falls behind or Kassanen falls behind, I. I the game has to be over because there's no tank on the side and yeah. Yep, we will see how that plays out. We will be right back after this with Aces High versus Dignitas on the rift. Welcome back everyone to the Intel Extreme Masters here in Cologne and we're about to get into game number two of Aces High versus Dignitas quarterfinal. Game number one, pretty simple stuff for Dignitas. There were some, I guess we can say, shining lights for Aces High in that one. Bottom lane in particular went really well for them. They've changed things up here, picking Pantheon, which is you know, the change away from Munu, which did basically nothing in game number one. What do we think to the picks in this one? Uh, I think their picks, hopefully if they, their jungler is a little bit more aggressive with the Pantheon pick, I think they could they could definitely win out. Like, you saw their bot lane was in a pretty good spot. Um, but, uh, yeah, they just, it's all, they're banking all in that early early game uh, and snowballing, just like the analyst has said. Um, but one thing I want to point out here, actually, is uh, Syndra was a really popular pick in Season 3 in North America and EU. Um, but in Korea, it never really took traction because they would pick things like Maokai into it. And she's a really immobile champion, and they would just build super tanky on Maokai and just flank the Syndra and just pile all this CC on top of her and they would just kill you and you can't really do anything. So if that Maokai ever gets going, it that this this game is done. It's, it's so over. So they have to put a lot of effort into shutting down that Maokai. Well, once again, very deep wards from Dignitas, but are they going to try and counter them? Are they going to try and do anything about them? Nope. They're just going to let them stand there because Dignitas now have all the vision, but Nobody from Aces High wanted to go and counter that. They could easily have just snuck someone down into the top half of Dignitas jungle, done the same thing. Yeah, you need to, basically, if you have people going into your jungle, you need to counter that vision and go in the enemy jungle and get the same amount of vision that you, you need to trade off that vision. But uh, looks like they're just fine playing safe on it. I mean, they might get triple buffed here, but I doubt it. It looks like, uh, looks like they're just going to back out. They actually double warded their own jungle as well because they knew, I guess they knew that the invade was coming and they were just like, okay, let's just completely cover it off. And that was, you can see the tribal wards actually worn off already. That's how early they warded that one out. So they were a little cautious. Dignitas are well aware of who is going to be in what lane. So it looks like they're happy to pick into that 2v2 lane. 
Yeah, Dig actually have a really scary level one, so it's kind of good that Ace Aside didn't try to fight against. I mean, Thresh plus Ari and Lee Sin, pretty scary stuff. So, start for the junglers there will be a red buff for Lee Sin. And the Krug start up on the top side of the map for Ace is high. And Theocles playing, funnily enough, the Pantheon here. Yep. Solid Greek legend is uh, what he's playing at the moment. We'll see if it works out for him, see whether he makes some of those man drops because we've seen some uh, suboptimal Pantheons. Man flops. I think, yeah, man flops. That's, that's what you and me do, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but we've seen them in the jungle. But look at this. Crumb's coming very early. Oh, he's only just hit level two and he's running scared. Let's see if he can get away from this one. He has got Flash. Sonic Wave doesn't land. He is scot free. That's such a weird gank path. He got his red and he ran all the way from bot lane all the way up to top lane. I think he, he thought that the Pantheon would level two gank top. Maybe he's going up there to back him up and just he's like, hey, I'm here. Might as well go for the gank. You can see him waiting in this brush. So he's waiting for that Pantheon gank and he's just trying to put a little bit of pressure in the meantime. But Pantheon's just not coming. Yeah, and he hadn't used Flash either, so instead turns the aggression around and Theocles continues farming. So working out well for Aces High in this early startup. Stun very, very close to landing on Shifter. Didn't quite lock him up there though, but the farm is very much even between those two. We did see some early pressure down in this bottom lane. Coach AJ already put in them. The hurt on that's a good death sentence landed, but wasn't followed up by Coach AJ. He'd already put the majority of his damage down on Holy Phoenix. But that is a gigantic CS differential building already. Uh, I mean, they're just waiting for the, pave, uh, the wave to pile on. So they're going to catch up a little bit in the CS. So you can see, like, two waves piled up. So it's not going to be that bad. Um, and then Jano actually scales pretty well against Thresh. So uh, I think they're going to be okay in this lane. They're just going to farm happily, I think. The real lane I'm worried about is the Syndra versus Ari matchup. Because that's, like that's a huge skill matchup with heavy favor into the Syndra. Because basically, you can stun the Ari out of, like, any of her jumps. And he just one-shot her. Um, so, I'm, I'm Shifter's like really confident to pick Ari into that matchup. Well, let's see. You gotta land that stun first of all. See if Avenue can pull that one off. Meanwhile, top lane is gonna be oh, quite a lot of pressure actually coming out from Gamzu early on there. We see that Faldron actually down to less than half HP off that initial fight. And they're pretty much even in terms of CS on that front. There's a nice little Howling Gale onto Core JJ. And as we see that. Minion wave that was piled up earlier on going down brings the CS a little bit more even with Pantheon now making a route around the back. This could be dangerous for Dignitas. Theocles, let's see if he can make something. He is coming in blind, so they're unaware of him. And they are quite far up. Core JJ already on half hit points. Let's see, this has got to be good play from Kiwi Kid. Core JJ is the focus. They're going to switch on Kiwi Kid. There's the flash. There's the stun. Damage coming in there. Meanwhile, back in the top lane. Gamsu in trouble. He's going to go down first blood. And they didn't even get Kiwi Kid. He got away with next to nothing. Flashing blip markers. Core JJ held them off. And wow, Dignitas again come out on top in a close exchange. Yeah, at least, uh, I mean, the Pantheon, he's actually going into the enemy jungle this time, putting some wards down, like putting some pressure on the map. So I got to give him that. Um, and he's going to actually make him burn the TP here, which is actually going to be pretty big, because once Kazan hits level 6, he's going to have a... Oh. Oh, diving into this one, but he's totally messed it up, to be fair. Kiwi Kid actually surviving that one. Core JJ gets himself exhausted. They thought they could do it with him being on low HP, but, well, it just went pear-shaped for them. The exhaust death sentence screwed him completely. Yeah, he got completely outplayed there. I mean, he should know that the summoners are still up. He, like, he did the gank, uh, but I don't know. Uh, but one thing I wanted to point out is Kastan's going to have TP once he's level 6, so maybe they can make a nice TP play bottom and take advantage of the fact that Maokai won't have it. I think that'll be like their one saving grace in this. Yeah, they're on fairly oh. even time as Coach AJ is so low. 18 hit points I think he went down to after that boomerang came through. Crumb's still sticking around. Maokai now back in their top lane. Gamsu, let's see. They're going to go for... Thaldron once again. Hasn't hit level 6 yet, so can't riff walk away. Minion wave coming in. Let's see if he even tries to get the minions done. He's like, I need something to help me get away. Doesn't bother burning his flash. Last second gets wow. out of there. Nicely done, Thaldron. And now he's got the support. Theocles got to come around. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Kiwi Kid in trouble. He's going to go down. Holy Phoenix, though. Is he taking too many tower hits? He has. And he goes down. It's a tower kill. That's not too bad. He got away with it lightly. Top lane. Well, they went in for it, but they didn't get anything from it. I like the boomerang blade as he's dead. He's like, I'm going to try to get some farm out of this. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty surprised that Cassin ended up living in that. I mean, Crumbs is investing a lot of time into camping this lane and making sure that he keeps him down. And as I said before, they want to make sure the Maokai is ahead because he's the key to winning with Dignitas' team comp. If he gets big against double AP, just stacks magic resist, the game is done. Can't kill him, that's for sure. Gansu, no, pretty quiet in game number one. Actually did really well when it came to the team fights, but honestly... Exactly. I mean, it's not exactly you see a, a Maokai play and you go, wow, that was really impressive Maokai <laughs> play right Twisted there. Twisted advanced like a pro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's not exactly the flashiest of champions, but gets the job done, that's for sure. Mid lane, we've not visited that one for quite a while. And actually, it's a good lane so far for Avenue. Up by uh, a few CS at this point. They are level six now, so we'll see if Shifter plays this one aggressive and whether uh, he ends up getting stunned whilst doing so. We'll see exactly how they're going to play that one. Meanwhile, Core JJ coming back into that bottom lane after being forced back earlier on with a Brutalizer Ooh. now up against the BF Sword. He's unseen. The Siocles is coming up here against Gamzu. Yeah, he's unseen this time around. He can jump on him, waits for that flash. There's the pounce. Have they got enough to take him down, though? He is such a big, chunky tank already with that Catalyst. And he walks scot-free once again. This is... He's getting away with this a little bit too easy, but both flashes are burned now in that top lane. Teleports are down as well. Yeah, you know, one thing I want to point out is uh, the Pantheon actually went for uh, the Rangers instead of the Chilling Smite, which is a lot of, what a lot of people are doing. And uh, maybe you could have got the kill in that game. It's a little bit extra damage, a little bit extra CC. So, um, yeah, I think that would actually help this bot gang too. Probably would have got a kill there. So, uh, I mean, Rangers was the thing last patch, but I think you got to get with the times on 4.21 and, <laughs> and go with the Stalkers. Yeah. See down on that bottom side, Holy Phoenix having his shield basically baited out a couple of times. Let's see what they go for. Let's see uh, Noxiac just giving him that Janna shield as well, going to help things out. We also see that blue buffs are spawning in for a second time. And of course, will be donated over to those mid laners. Shifter already helping Crumbs get that one down and will return into the mid lane with that one intact. Blue buff coming up slightly later here for Aces High, but that will, of course, go over to Avenue as well. So both mid laners going to have that extra blue buff to work with, building pretty much the exact same as each other as well. You know, I'm surprised the Kassim actually has a CS advantage after all the work Kron's put into camping and ganking that lane over and over again. I mean, he's actually coming out pretty far ahead, and that's a good lane for Kassim once you get a small lead. Uh, maybe they can set up a... Like, what I want to see them do is I want to see them get a deep ward in bottom, like maybe behind the turret, have Cast and a TP into that, and have Pantheon ulti on top of that, and just like four man stack and dive on that bot turret and try to try to get some kills down there. Went well for them last time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, without without that, okay. <laughs> Make sure you juggle a tower aggro a little bit better. As see a lot of damage. Actually, flash hook in there on towards Noxiac, pulling him into tower range. But Holy Phoenix going mad at the back, trying to take down Core. Meanwhile, we do see the TP. Oh, Cassidy no. coming down, but Core still alive. Finally, will get dropped off. Will be a one for one in the end. Cassidy and Maokai getting kills. And now Theocles coming towards this bottom lane. Basically, uh, just a different route around his jungle in the end because there was nothing really available to him. Um, yeah, but they, now there's no summoners on Thresh, and they have Pantheon ultimate up, so he's going to want to look to return to that lane and just try to pick up those kills and snowball that lane. Like That seems to be their strongest lane. Like, last game, they did the best, so I would probably stick to my strongest lane and try to get them ahead. Surely that was way too deep by Thaldron. I mean, like, they, he never in a million years had a chance of escaping that. As well, soon as he teleported, as soon as he riff walked in, he's like, well, I may as well get the kill and die. Well, it's yeah, that's, that's okay. I mean, it's a kill in Cassidy. And uh, your kill's a kill, but you're giving a load of assists across. I mean, they're assists on your lanes, too. So, I mean, it, I think getting a kill in Cassidy is like, yeah, okay. Yeah, they did get the assists. And they traded point. out TP. Holy so. Phoenix got the damage down. Yeah, that's a good good point. Yeah, it could be worse. At least they got the kill this time when they dove, all right? Like, they're, they're getting, they're like slowly <laughs> working their way up, okay? <laughs> One step at a time. <laughs> baby steps, baby steps. Yeah. The problem is Gamsu is 2-0 and has completed that Rod of Ages. It was him that got the kill down in that bottom lane, which means he puts him ahead in build on his lane partner, who himself is trying to harass him. Crumb's actually catching on to Avenue and forcing out Flash. Kind of surprised him, I think. He didn't expect him to come, but Jump is going down. What? Crumb's is the focus target. Pounce is in there. Charm doesn't land, actually. Theocles will get away with this one, and they're going to turn it around. Avenue gets the kill on Crumb's, and they were completely outnumbered, and they weren't expecting that. Yeah, it looked like uh, the Pantheon got served up for supper, but uh, Shifter just choked and didn't hit the charm, so he ended up paying the price. I think actually Crumbs kicked him 
out of the way of it. Yeah, I mean, that's, like, easy to do, though. Like, you're, you're like, yo, man, I'm going to, like... Because there's no communication there. You're just in the moment. And, like, you know, each of you have a CC, and one of them displaces you. So it's, like, pretty hard to stack those up, in like, in a wrong way. Well, showing that that's definitely possible. There's a hook going through, actually missing from Kiwi Kid. Not exactly the easiest to land there over the top of the wall. His bottom lane still slight advantage for Core JJ. Well, it's, uh, well, just mm. gone the other way, but he's got a wave coming in. So just showing how really kind of level that one is. And Ace is high actually have a gold lead at this point. It's only 300 gold, but it's a gold lead nonetheless. Yeah, and we said before uh, they had to all in, like get this kind of early game snowballing. This seems to be what they're good at, and it's working out for them so far. Good binky there. Hasn't been spotted. Crumbs didn't see it. He's just looking around for the lower half. He's been spotted himself, though. They're going to come around, and Crumbs will not find anything. So while he had great paths and was getting those kills on Rengar in the previous matchup, it's not quite working out for them with Lee Sin. They're ready and waiting for him. Theocles, once again, is heading down, and they're actually hunting and stalking onto Crumbs, who will just back away. So... Played Ace three versus high. five as well. Uh, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I see two of them. Yeah, this bot lane is getting really pressured, and Pantheon's going to go down there and visit that again. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my, oh, no. <laughs> All right, I don't think he wants to pay an, another dive into the turret and give them another kill. So. Ulti for ulti. That's yeah. not too bad. I mean, the silver ulti is down, of course, but looking like we're going to see the mid lane is making a move and a potential dragon sets up here for Ace's height. I think they're not going to go for it. I think they wanted to make a pick first before they made a move. Yeah, it's still kind of risky. Maokai can still... Oh, he doesn't have his TP up, actually. Um, I don't think they know that, though. It's pretty close. So yeah, Ma no, they're both TP at the same time, so they're going to have a rough idea on the cooldown. Yeah. The two top laners. But if Maokai TP'd into that fight and already got it on some people, that could be pretty... They don't want to throw away their advantage, so I think it's better they don't go for that. A little Wise scared. choice. Wise choice from Aces. And actually, going to do some little damage here onto that tower. Uh, way below half HP, and actually we see them stepping forward. All going to be about whether Kiwi Kid can land the hook or the flame or not. Yeah, pretty hard to hit that on server when she has spell shield, so she's going to run away. Be fine. Oh, oh. top lane, got to be Gamsu. Thaldrin's basically not a bad, not a good actor there, because that was pretty obvious. Even I could tell that one was coming. He's going to get the stun down. Has he got the damage? Flash is available if he can time it right. He's been slowed down by that force pulse. He's going to go down. Now, down the bottom lane. In goes Core JJ. We'll get the kill down on towards Noxiac. Ace Holy Phoenix in trouble as well. Avenue looking towards the bottom, but can't get the kills. And it's Shifter. Shifter, the man that came down there, didn't get followed by Avenue. Yeah, it looked like uh, he's just, uh, I mean, he's just a little bit behind. If he was there like five seconds earlier, could have been better swing uh, in their favor. But uh, at least they got the kill on top. Um, Kassim is doing pretty good. He has his TP up. So they might be able to contest this. Like, they're all really, really low health. I don't think they should go for this dragon. And that pinky, as you so eloquently put it earlier on, in the side of that dragon pit. Not sure they've actually spotted that there, Dignita. So that's going to be staying alive for quite a little while. Well, Theocles starting off the blue buff avenue will come across to collect on that one. Blue buff on the other side of the map is up and available as well for Shifter when he finally comes in. And they've just totally messed that up. And Theocles now has a blue buff and Syndra doesn't. But they're going to go Dragon anyway. Okay, I mean, they know the bot lane just backed. Um, they have a pretty good timing window. So I think they're going to be okay to do this. They look, they look pretty safe. And they're handing off blue anyways, Dignitas is. So I don't think anybody's going to come for this. Simple dragon pickup, teleport to the top lane. That is going to keep that tower safe for now. I like. I'm oh, sorry. I like that he did this, um, where he he walked down to dragon. It's a lot of top laners will like stay top, and they'll be like, I'm he I got TP. If you guys need me at the dragon, like I'll be there. Instead, he just walked down and he TP back top to get the wave. Okay, we get flashed in there. I'm not sure uh, that one went to plan. And there is the TP actually cancelled mm. out by Gamzu. So. All looked a little bit disjointed there for Dignitas, to be honest. Kiwi Kid flashing in, didn't use his ultimate, and yeah, not really sure what happened. He's going to throw out the hook, but again, Spell Shield from Holy Phoenix will stop him being pulled in. You think some of that is the communication issues? Uh, it looks that way. Yeah, that's, uh, Dignitas seems to have some growing pains with that. Well, it was a Korean to a Korean, so <laughs> you'd hope they'd be able to communicate. Do you, okay. think, do you think they yell like uh, stuff in Korean at each other? Maybe. In that scenario, it makes more yeah. sense. Kiwi Kid's like, 
I, 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 I got to learn a bit of Korean as well. And I thought he said flash, so that's why he just flashed it. <laughs> no, I, I want to ask them uh, how they make calls after this. Oh, here we go. Pantheon man drop going in. Core JJ, the focus, but Kiwi Kid's out of position. They've caught them both. They're going to get the two kills. Kiwi Kid knocked up in the air. It's going to be an easy double. Who will take it? Only Phoenix will eventually know. <laughs> Theocles gets the double kill. Crumbs has actually joined this party. Shifter comes down. He's got someone following this time. Oh, <laughs> Avenue completely juke, but the stun is just about enough. It's now a triple kill for Theocles. Can he go for the quadro on Crumbs? He's running the hell away. Yeah, I gotta say, the Akris is catching up. Looks a lot better on uh, this oh, Pantheon. Oh, don't give him back the double. He can try and turn this around him. He's got no support. Now he has the shield in from Noxiak, and he's gonna go for the Quadra. He gets it, but it's just a little bit too late. Yeah, this looks night and day compared to his Nunu game last game. In Nunu game, he's just running around, like trying to eat some creeps, maybe put some wards in the, on his side of the jungle. And this one, he just, he just basically got a oh, late Quadra. Like, this is completely different than his last game. And there's Tower going down. First one in the game, actually, in favor of Aces. High. So they actually are closing in, or have right now, a two and a half thousand gold lead, which certainly a better start from that first game. And a 5 1 1 Pantheon, as you said, night and day comparing it to his uh, performance on Nunu in match number one. And certainly seems like. It's uh, changed a few things for the team, playing with a bit more confidence this time around. Yeah, if you look at the CS as well, ahead in the top lane, ahead in the mid lane, slightly behind in that bottom lane as well. And actually Gamzu and Thaldrin having a bit of a head-to-head uh, -head in the top lane. Problem is now that Ari's going to be coming up. There's a Rift Walk available there for Thaldrin in a second, and he will instantly hit R and get back to the safety of his tower. Yeah, at least all the kills are on the Pantheon, who does fall off a little bit. But uh, Dig actually have a pretty AB heavy team comp with the Maokai and the Ari, so they stack some magic this. He could be a real problem. Oh, Hody Phoenix sidestepping everything here and putting a lot of damage down. Kiwi Kid taking a big hit, has to get the Lantern to Core JJ. And now Ace is high looking confident in all lanes right now. You saw the mid lane was being pressured, Avenue put in some. Damage on towards that because Shifter had gone up towards that top lane. The Aldrin has been very confident in the top there. And like you say, just points out, it's a gigantic CS difference. Obviously, Shifter's been leaving the lane a bit more. Did go get that double kill down the bottom, but 40 CS differential, only a kill advantage. It's a pretty big chunk of change, and you can see it's a 500 gold advantage now for Avenue. Yeah, I think a lot of that is just the Syndra Ari matchup. I mean, Syndra, as you gain up in levels, um, it's just a real threat of just, you hit any stuns on the Ari, she'll just instantly die. Uh, just And you just have greater range on your stun with Syndra. You just have a range advantage. So uh, I think this is really bad for Shifter unless you can get a good pick in the in the mid and late game. Well, I see about Alton Crumbs here coming across to clear a couple of wards inside of the brush. And we'll throw the Q out, landing onto Avenue. And that forces them to step back somewhat. Avenue, is he going to try and get in there? Throws out the stun, but actually towards the minion. So not really going too aggressive on that one. Crumbs, though, is coming back in. There's a Q landing onto Noxiak. Is he going to go for it? He is. He actually kicks Avenue back, but there is Sivir as well. And Crumbs is probably going down from this one. Holy Phoenix gets the kill. There was a very late TP from Thaldrin to come down as well. But if you look at this one, there are four versus four in that mid lane, all piling in. Ooh. Good boomerang from Holy Phoenix, catching three of them there. There's still been no man drop. It isn't quite available, which is what's held things up. I wonder if he's just going to sneak back around here and go back in towards it. It is on the tower, so there is a minion wave. He's sending himself. He's going to go for it. How can they deal with this one? That's a good force pull straight away. Shifter very low. Jumps back in. Theocles. Core JJ. Everyone's so low. The Aldrin goes for it. Can he chase down the kills? Theocles gets one. Kiwi Kid is low. The Aldrin goes in, gets himself a second. Can they get on towards Gansu now? They will get the clean sweep. There we go. All four of them going down. All set up by that man drop on the Rift Walk, and that will give them the tower as well. Aces High are controlling Dignitas in this game. And the Janna actually just got the Soul Stealer right before that, so she just cashed in and she has 10 Soul Stealer stacks. So she's wow. got, yeah, he's got to be pretty happy. And they get two towers off the back of that as well. 6k gold three. lead. Yeah, 6,000 gold lead. And honestly, this would be a massive upset, but there's that replay once again. Man drop coming right on top of them. Yeah, I mean, this is real easy. It's all point and click stuns. Like, there's nothing they can mess up here. Pantheon just going to jump in on them. Casting can just perma slow them. You have Janus speeding everybody up with the Sivir ultimate. It's just so easy to run everybody down. And they have, they just have nothing they can do here. 
Great, great stuff. So, two towers in the mid lane, obliterated by Aces High. Dragon is now up, and Dignitas, they have to play the patient game. They have to try and sit this one out a little bit and calm things down. Can they turn a good fight? I'm not too sure, because now Crumbs is in trouble. They tried to go for Holy Phoenix. Gamsu teleports in, but he's straight in the middle of a team, and he has to take the lantern to get the hell out of there. Theocles beating down Core JJ, and Dignitas all step away. Shifter separated from his team as they move back towards that dragon. Can it be a risky play for Aces High, though? They're going to start it off. It looks like Dignitas is simply going to take the tower and not interested in a fight. Yeah, I think Crumbs should just go for the steal here and try to get Lantern out. Like, they cannot fight this. Oh, down to a thousand, and there it is. Going to be picked up by Aces High. Well, Theocles, I think, was trying to touch the Lantern, trying to click the Lantern there. In the end, Thaldrin actually diving into the enemy team. There is the Mandrop, actually came oh, in behind them, and they find themselves oh. kind of separated from the rest of their teammates here. There's a good chance oh, coming triple. through. Will they be able to actually get the kill? Gamzu, actually, he's going to go low, and he's oh. finished off there by Holy Phoenix. That's a four for one in favor of Aces High and the Dragon. Yeah, this is, uh, that's not the new new from last. Uh, somebody, like, went on his computer and, like, kicked him off. And he was, like, playing for him. Like, he got, like, Diamond Procs over here or somebody. Like, he's like, get, like, get out of here. Like, let me play. You, could, you couldn't <laughs> hope for a better Heart Seeker there. Four of them all just stood there. He's like, well, okay, I'll get all of you in my Heart Seeker. And then just power them down. 10, 1, 3 on Theocles right now. Bit of a change from the 0-6-0, I think it was, in the last game. He's definitely having a, a bit of an MVP moment. So, Ace is high now, building up an 8,000 gold lead over Dignitas. This was not in the script, absolutely not, for the new Korean players on Dignitas. A lot of pressure on them right now because obviously they're coming into this team, and you know, Dick, we heard from Odie earlier on talking about how he's basically built this team around no, not putting pressure on the players, but to come to this tournament and be pressured by a team that's already running a substitute, let alone a team from Turkey who are obviously considered lower than the North American LCS. This is a big upset right now. Uh, I mean, this is pretty good play out of Aces High, but I want to say it's like a bigger blunder out of Dignitas. Um, they could have got better lane matchups with the 2v1, um, pressured the Kassander harder, make sure he doesn't get ahead, because Kassander and Maokai is a pretty good matchup. And yeah, they should have just looked at 2v1, get good, 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 uh, good lane setups and just try to keep down their, their carries and, and put pressure on, on their carries, but it looks like Aces High just got all the lane matchups they wanted. Yeah, Gamzu might be in trouble here. Actually, we'll be able to walk away quick enough, but they're losing another tower. This will be the fifth of the game going to Aces High. Are they going to try and they might, yeah, they might even try push. and go for more at this point. You see Ding Tass in the mid lane, pretty much all recalling, but I think that might be just a little bit too late here. Aces High pushing on through, and they're able to get that tower down so, so very quickly. They stay. Two of them stay. They can keep on pushing. I mean, with a Sivir, Ultimate? Why would you even remotely try and think we can try and base race this or hold on? That's a scary, scary thought. And well, Aces High just tactically outplayed Dignitas there, maneuvering. They've got full vision over the top half of Dignitas' jungle now. They need to get something down in the lower, but it is all Aces High now. They have control. They're trying to set up a Baron Bait, and Gamsu may well fall for it. He's got his saplings. You should assume he will check with them. There we go. That's going to find the entire Aces High team, and they will play it a little bit more cautiously, I feel. Yeah, I wonder if that's just the communication breakdown again. I mean, it seems like everybody's just not on the same page in Dignitas. Like, you have half the team wanting to do one thing, you have the other half trying to do the other. So, uh, I think that... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how to fix that during the middle of a series, but, uh... Yeah. <laughs> I got nothing for him. Well, Ace is high. Coming into this one as underdog with two substitutes in their lineup. I said before game one that Holy Phoenix mentioning that they weren't super confident exactly coming into this game, but that's sometimes what can happen when the pressure's off, when you know the whole world's expecting you really to lose the best of three series. And let's be fair, they got crushed in game one. We expected them to change out that new new jungle that was honestly pretty crap for them in game number one. <laughs> but Theocles this time around, 10-1-3 with Pantheon. Absolutely a different player at this point. However, Thaldrin might now get oh. caught out. Avenue certainly will, and he's just blown up instantly. A lot of burst from this Dignitas side. Yeah, that was a nice pick by uh, Dignitas. I mean, that's how you're supposed to use the team comp with Ari, and that's the only way they could possibly get back in the game, is they get a lot of picks, but I don't think that one kill on Cinder is going to do anything besides slow them down at this point. 
Yeah, he says hi, just gonna go up and clear the top and bottom wave. I don't think they're gonna push anything else other than just get that little extra farm they are. Out farming in every single lane right now. Although the AD carries is arguably very close, but even see Theocles is actually the one farming the bottom wave. He's the one getting the CS. It's like, hey, I'm 10 one 3 I've done my work. I want this farm. I fully deserved it. And he's actually a pretty big tanky damage dealer right now. He's a serious problem for them because if he jumps on someone, it's got enough to stop Core JJ doing the damage down on him. And they don't really ever want to focus him. When there's a Syndra and a Cassidy, they're the people you're looking at. So he's getting a free reign right now and it's making absolutely the most of it. Jung uh, Jungle Dragon, I was about to say. <laughs> Jungle <laughs> it's a new, Dragon. A new, a new minion being added in there. I'm not too sure. It's, it's a secret spoilers coming out from Internal Riot. But a minute to go before the Dragon is up. And I'm wondering whether Dignitas are going to try and contest it. I'm not too sure because, of course, that means AC High would stack out yet another Dragon buff. And it's starting to get scary for Dignitas. The pressure is very much building on them. You can see they were just looking around. It's like, can we get anything from this blue? Not really. Can we try and get a pick? Not going to work out. Holy Phoenix with the ultimate. They're turning and chasing with that Silver ulti. They can catch them. Well, are they going to be able to get in there? They've got Ari off to the side. That's a good little box from Kiwi Kid, but actually getting stunned up there at Max Energy. We see the respect that Dignitas have to have here for Ace of Side. They hook in Holy Phoenix, but there's just no follow up damage for them. Crumbs will come around the side. Q will land onto Noxiac, but that would send him right into the middle of the team as the dragon is going to spawn in. Will Ace of High be able to get this? Dignitas hanging around. They look like they want to get involved. Watch for the stuns from Avenue. Watch for a Howling Gale coming out from Noxiac. That could start things off here for Aces High. Well, you can see Noxiac just around the side looking to try and create something. A stun from Avenue, as you said, would be lethal on anyone in Dignitas. Again, Sonic Wave doesn't land. Dragon started off going very low already. If they're going to try and steal it, it has to be now. It doesn't happen. They get it down. They get themselves one. That's Crumbs who tried to get the steal. Noxiac's taken low, but look at Thaldrin coming around the side. Core JJ focused on. Stun doesn't quite land on him, but it doesn't matter. Oh, wow. Got a big miss click there. Didn't want to do that. Charm from Theocles. He might go down. That'd be a big kill kill. They do get him, but it's a three-man stun coming out. Shifter taken down. Gamsu gets low. He gets himself one. Just about the Aldrin holding on the minions, the shield from the Oxyac keeping him alive. And it is a four for three fight. But more importantly, Aces High picked up the dragon and they're taking this in into it. Yeah, during the whole time that Topway was pushing it and piling, um, and they're just, it's right there for them. It all just worked out perfectly. Like they just like, oh, hey, look, uh, the minions are already there. I mean, we're just chasing this all the way. Let's just get the top inhibitor too. And this is like a really bad spot for Dignitas because not only did they just lose their inhibitor, Oh, here's the team fight. Um, yeah, Crumbs is actually going to go in to try to steal the dragon, but he's just going to die instantly. They have so much CC and burst damage, just instantly kill him, and it's just so easy to chase them down with all, you know the movement speed from the Janna and all, and uh, <laughs> the Pantheon's high movement speed, Kassadin's Rift Walk. It's just, it's just easy. Piece of cake. It would have been even easier if he didn't press, press his Zonyas halfway through uh, <laughs> chasing them down. But, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. You get a 4 for 2 in the end and everybody's happy. It's a 11,000 gold lead for Aces High. Inhibitor down in the top lane. They actually had the bottom lane pushing in their favor as well. They could have looked around. Everyone's still a little bit low though, so they, uh, they decided against that one. And my question now is... Can Aces High finish off the game? Two substitutes makes it a little bit harder. There's a man drop or a flop as it really turned out to be. Gets charmed halfway through, but Core going very, very low. Of Avenue gonna come around the side, Thaldrin this time using his Zonyas when he actually needed it. And this could be Kiwi Kid going down. There's the Howling Gale onto Gamsu as well. He will be forced to flash over the wall and a two for nothing, easy as you like for Aces High. Two more assists, and the Jan has the 20 stacks on the Soul Sealer. She's ready, Damn. man. You know the game's in a bad spot when the... Oh wait, what's her AP at? She has uh, 201 AP with that. Oh, my so, God. Yeah, she's pretty strong. Well, she has Monsoon available. She needs to heal off right now as they come around the side there. Crumbs wants to get the steal. Can Dignitas turn their fortunes with this Baron Smite? I'm not too sure. Holy Phoenix is going to pursue. They've peeled away. And instead, they're going for Crumbs. They keep the Baron ticking. It is still doing a lot of damage on Theocles, actually. He's got to be careful he doesn't get popped by that. And they've actually peeled away. So Crumbs did enough to pull them away from that one. That's a kind of surprising, mate. Oh, the Oculus. Attack move, bro. Attack move into that bush. 
Yeah, I'm actually surprised they didn't go to finish that and just have the Janna put a ward over. And uh, if the Lee Sin decides to queue in or ward hop over, you can just tornado him out. And you're still good to. And she has her ultimate too. She has two mm. ways you can kick the Lee Sin out. Um, so, I mean, th these people are subs, so there's probably just a communication breakdown with that. Oh, there's the damage coming out. Holy Phoenix is dead here. Shifter being able to catch them out. And funnily enough, that, that brush has been responsible for at least two kills for Dignitas, where they've got those picks. And that seems to be one of their possible only hopes, to be honest, in this game going forward. 23 to 12 kills behind, 11,000 gold. And Ace is high. What are they going to go for? We were talking about, you know, how teams can throw up Baron in game number one. Aces high have to be so, so very careful about how they deal with it. I, I think they're strong enough to just force it in turn. Like, they have Sivir Ultimate. They can start the Baron once they're all grouped up and back together. And just use the Sivir Ultimate to run them down. Um, I, I definitely, I mean, they're, what, they're 12,000 gold up. Uh, they have to know they're that far ahead. Like, it's 12 to 23. You have most of the dragons. You have all their turrets down. You have to feel like you're in a position where you're you're strong enough to do this. Uh, so I'm just waiting for them to make that power play. Well, they did manage to get in and get the ward coverage on towards that Baron. I don't think that's really what Ace is interested in. They realize, yeah, it's too risky. Let's just carry on doing what we're doing. It's It worked out well. Noxiak finds Gamsu, forces him away, just clears out any coverage. While this is all happening, of course, Soldron is just pushing that bottom wave in. They're waiting to see if anyone's going to come and deal with this wave. Instead, chooses to step forward. He's fairly blind in that bottom half, but he is, at the end of the day, Cassidy. He can riff walk away from everything, and he will get himself at least a wave pushed in. Still nobody back to deal with it right now, so he's going to get at least a wave's worth of damage on towards it. And they've started off the Baron. He's got wards to come to if he needs to teleport in there. There's the screen all being used. And Ace is high. Well, they're just keeping them busy. Cassidy has been backed away. But that Baron is going down. Yeah, Aces High seem really indecisive on this. They need to do one or the other. Um, oh, a lot of damage coming around. There's a diving. Actually, they managed to take down Avenue just after he's using ultimate there. Will they stick around for this one? The kick will actually knock, I think, three of them up in the end. There's a flash away, actually, from Crumbs. Will land a Q on the way out. There is Soldier now getting involved in this one. They managed to take him down. And Aces High trying to push Dignitas right back into the base. There's the exhaust onto Crumbs. The knockup will land max range onto Shift. The Holy Phoenix needs one more auto attack. We'll get that one. Looks like Crumbs is going down as well. Holy Phoenix will come and it was speared down from Theocles <laughs> in the end. And they that is finish. the ace for Aces they High. Can, they can finish the game. They've got 15 second death times. Kiwi Kids just spawned, but there's super minions on the Nexus turrets already. Holy Phoenix is going to come around there. He's just going to try and rush in. Are they going to go for it? And if we will respawn, which actually trolled Theocles, <laughs> I think, there as he was on the tower. Nobody saw it, mate. It's all right. Just back away. You're having a great game. 12 two and nine, but Ace is high. I tell you what, that game with Dignitas some serious, serious troubles in game two. All right, the big thing on this is now they know all of Dignitas' summoners are down, so they can just set up that play again and run them down with Sivir, and now they have no flashes to get away. So once they're on you, they're, you're dead, like you're done. So I think if they just, they're confident enough to go for that play again, it'll be game over. That's another blue buff for Avenue. Holy Phoenix thanks to his kill earlier on to shift that has a blue buff as well. Not good position to be in. This is uh, Dragon number four possibly going towards Aces High and there's an ultimate Kiwi Kid. Oh, you ignoring. are almost possibly maybe not quite dead. <laughs> but he's out of there, that's for sure. He's not gonna be involved in this one. That will be the fourth Dragon pickup for Aces High. That's the minion damage tower destruction it says there, which is wrong, isn't it? Didn't that switch around? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true. It says pushing power on the second buff, yeah, which is actually is. they swapped that around. Yeah, switched in 421. I'm assuming we're on 421. Now I'm, now I'm like questioning myself. <laughs> no one told the guy that updates the text in yeah, game. Yeah, I don't think Wait, they did. Hold on. I got a good way to check this. Is Warwick in the game? Okay, he's not in the game. <laughs> All right, we're good. We're good, guys. We're good. <laughs> good call. <laughs> <laughs> so at the moment, Ace is high. Now four dragon stacks up. Still yet to pick up that Baron. They've toyed with the idea a couple of times and Dignitas do interrupt them. You see Gamsu tossing that sapling in just to make sure it's not happening again because they are very low at the moment. No flashes, as you mentioned. Gamsu has got a flash. They have the screen orb if they need to really last minute check it without blind faith checking it. Oh, look at that. Gamsu. Half his hit points were chunked down by a single
basic attack and static shift from Holy Phoenix. Because while he's built a lot of magic resist, he hasn't really got a lot of armor on there. And Holy Phoenix is just chunking him down with that last Whisper Infinity Edge, Bloodthirst, the static shift, everything on there. Silver ulti pop, they're going in. They're going to dive right into the back line there. We actually see Gamsu get in the middle, but he'll pay the price with his life in the end. That's a good little stun. Core JJ actually getting kicked away there. What are they going to do now? Faldrin will be the chaser. Holy Phoenix Avenue and Noxiac going to loop around the bottom side of the jungle. There's a big boomerang coming in. The hook actually landed. They managed to kill off Avenue. Can they get any more, though? They're, to be honest, dropping like flies here with a double kill from Thaldrin. That's four men down, and I feel like it might be the base and the Nexus that goes with it. They're going to try and tank this one off. Thaldrin is taking the damage from Nexus turret number one. They will be able to get that down. Krubs goes in, tries to get the kill, but instead is exhausted straight out. Noxak hits 20 stacks, and there's the man drop to finish it off. Theocles, the man with the Radiant Zone, and will tank down the second Nexus turret. The game will go to aces high. We are all squared at one apiece. This was definitely not in the script book for Dignitas, but what a great game from Aces High. Two substitutes on that team coming into this. Zero confidence, just playing how they wanted, and they've tied up the series. They look just as shocked that they won as everyone else. They're like, wait, what? Wait, what the it's heck only happened? It's one game, guys. No shaking hands and hugging just yet. You've got to win another one after this. But look at Dignitas. It couldn't be any more different, I think, on their side of things. Staying sat down, going to use the time that they have, I think, five minutes in between series, really, to talk about, you know, what went wrong for them. Or, you know, there was just not really much that went right, to be fair. They were almost 20,000 gold behind by the end of it. Twice the kills for Aces higher than Dignitas could pull off. And again, if we look down the scoreboard, 12 to 11 for Theocles. Might want to think about banning the Pantheon, I think, uh, away from this second one. You know, forcing back onto Nunu where he did nothing in game number one. But also Holy Phoenix by the end, 10, 3, and 16. Really, really impressive performance overall there in the end. Aces high take game number two. We're going to head over to Shox, to Fischio, and Dexter to break it down. Uh, thank you very much, Joe. Indeed, um, I think the words, well, the actual words and not the abbreviation, WTF was uttered here at a certain <laughs> moment in this game because, wow, Ace is high. I mean, you called it. They got a jungler who could, um, in Pantheon, that could make something happen early, and they just snowballed out of control. Yeah, I mean, they did... Let's say if we ignore the first, like, five, six minutes, then suddenly everything, everything just worked for them. The Pantheon, every single gank was great. We did uh, talk about the start for the Panther here. We wanted to see more towards the top lane, help out the Kassadin. But as soon as he could get, uh, get going through the bottom lane ganks, it was just too easy for him to snowball. And I have to say, Kiwi Kid, when you're playing Thresh and you completely waste your summoners, and you're against a Panther, you know he has ulti because you time it every single time. What you do as a Thresh is you stand behind your AD carry, and you don't go, go for any trades, you have your lantern ready in case there's an ulti coming in towards you, and then you get out safely under your own turret. Instead, they stay in the lane to take trades, Jenna just goes in, lands slow, Pantheon jumps in, double kill bottom lane, and suddenly Pantheon just gets going. Yeah, I mean, that's not much. <laughs> this game is just... I have to say I'm really disappointed in Dignitas here, in this series, already. I mean, the first game was, yeah, I mean, kind of convincing, you know, but then again, it just uh, bot lane completely getting outlast. Yeah, yeah, they're getting out, like, outskilled here in that. Two games in a row. Two yeah. games, two in, games a row. in a yeah. row here. Just solo killed in a 2-on-2 two two without jungle pressure, basically, and then Shifter being a bit too overconfident with that Ari pick, because Sinra had a lot of free roam, actually, and then went up in CS on him. Pent like, Pentan wasn't doing all too much in early game, but then he got the three kills or four kills in, like, one minute, and then after that, the game just went out of control. Crumbs really not doing it, like, he couldn't do much then, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, just overall very poor gameplay from Dignitas, I think. Yeah, it felt um, overconfident. Yeah. After the first game, where, of course, they had a massive goal lead, they won the game. In here, I mean, you look at, let's say, the picks. We talk about the Aris and Vicious talked about it as well, how risky it is into the Syndra. We talk about, again, the play in the bottom lane. Ghost Blade was picked up by Core JJ, even though they were so far behind. This is an item you use to snowball the game. Not when you're behind. You go for like a static shift at this point or into a last whisper and you just try and be as strong as possible. And sit there and you, need, you have the wave clip from the shift as well. Instead, he goes for Ghost Blade. And overall, like the way Dickens has played in, like in the mid lane as well, we had this team fight going on where they used the ulti from Ari, used the ulti from Graves, 
And instead of them backing away and respecting the fact there's, the, the fact there's a Pantheon who's going to ult in and mm -hmm. just kill you, they walk up, start hitting the tower, obviously Pantheon jumps in, and another teamfight won by Aces High, and they just managed to completely snowball the game from there. Let's actually talk or give a little bit more credit to Aces High. We did highlight that bottom lane, but just yeah. in general, they had the Sivir and they played the comp perfectly. Whenever they were able to get a pick, they just went forward and they had absolutely no hesitation. I don't know if that's um, a conscious decision or if you're just so far ahead that you just roll in and, and I do it. think it's just the fact that um, Aces bot lane is just completely outmatching Dignitas bot lane in this case. I mean, Everything happened at bot lane, and if Dignitas wouldn't make those rookie positioning errors from like Kiwi Kid especially, then Pantheon would have never been able to snowball that hard, in my opinion. And yeah, dragon fights, and then the fight at mid lane, what the feature just said yeah. is just completely that showed like that either Dignitas is playing with zero respect, or they're actually having like huge issues in the communication because they tried to trade in, like they got like three, they used three ultimates already, and then Pantheon still the ultimate. They tried to siege a tower against the Pantheon and Sivir, who can just run at you and just overwhelm you with their stuff. And yeah, just... And you were also mentioning that with the comp that um, Aces High was running, actually, they could fall off late. They didn't really have a tank that went in, and if uh, Dignitas had played the fight correctly and long run it, they wouldn't sustain through those fights, but... They just split up all over the place. Yeah, so Aces High plays a comp where it's all about getting their first pick and start the fight, and then you have this insane chase because you have to Sivir, you have to cast it in as well to slow down targets. And because Dignitas kept being out of position, and Aces High just took full advantage of it every single time they could. So full credit to them. They saw the openings, went for it, got the first kill, kept chasing, and just cleaned it up over and over and over. Yeah, I mean, we have been praising Holy Phoenix quite a lot, but cool. I just want to highlight this guy's um, decision making in the last team fight. I mean, we don't have a clip from it, sadly, but the way he chose the targets, I mean, when he ignored the Lee Sin and just flashed over the Lee Sin to, the to actually get the Ari kill, that was like very impressive deci decision making, you know? Against a team like Dignitas, you would say, yeah, Dignitas should actually like outclass those guys. And he's actually like his decision making, the way he targets people, the way he uses flash offensively, like even when there's player on the map still, he just flashes and ignores the Lee Sin, the has like less damage to that to go for the Ari to actually get the kill and then make sure that they can actually close out the game. So yeah, I'm actually like both disappointed by Dignitas and impressed by Ace. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic play coming out of Ace's high here in that second game. So it's all tied up. We're going to have a decisive game three after the break.